Let's be honest, DSLRs are not the biggest hype in 2022. Many photographers consider this camera type as obsolete. But I would argue that exactly the opposite is true. You should get a DSLR today for your photography and even for your videography. And here is why. Analog and vintage cameras are hugely popular today and rightly so because people want a different user experience to what they already know from their smartphones. And this is exactly where the DSLR fits the bill because a DSLR is essentially an analog single lens reflex camera without the film but with a digital sensor instead. So when shooting a DSLR, you can have an analog only user experience, completely screen free. And I think that in a world full of screens, this can really make the difference and bring joy and fun to your photography. Apart from that, you can even take things one step further. By getting a camera like the Nikon DF, you get a very old school analog control scheme because the Nikon DF has almost the exact same control layout as the well-renowned Nikon F4 professional camera. Reliability and dependability are two very important traits when it comes to selecting a camera type at least for me as a professional photographer. DSLRs are tried and tested. After many years of development, I'd say that the peak of DSLR technology was already reached two to three years ago. Of course, there are many improvements with newer models, but you can essentially get everything you need even in a 10-year-old DSLR. And that is quite remarkable, especially when it comes to autofocus performance. Even the very, very old DSLRs like the Canon 5D Mark I or the Nikon D2X deliver remarkable autofocus performance. It is just reliable if you know what you're doing. Apart from that, there is one interesting trait of mirrorless cameras that is often overlooked and that caused a lot of ruckus when I posted about it in various online forums. So a little story, about a year ago I wrote an article about mirrorless cameras and overheating and my argument was as follows. If you use a mirrorless camera on a very hot summer day and you use it constantly under direct sunlight, the camera will inevitably heat up. The constant preview that is generated in the electronic viewfinder of a mirrorless camera produces additional heat to the direct sunlight. And when I shot weddings, for example, on very, very hot days with one camera body that was constantly heated up, I noticed that image noise was going up by quite a bit. It wasn't like I couldn't get the job done, but in post-production I could see that there was something going on. And even camera manufacturers admit it. If you take a look at some Canon mirrorless manuals, it actually states that the image will degrade if the camera heats up beyond a certain point and most camera manufacturers also state that the mirrorless camera will turn off when it starts to overheat. So I wouldn't say that this is a super important thing to consider and that mirrorless cameras are bad because of that, but it is just a point to consider. And with a DSLR, you can also get overheating issues, but much later, as the sensor is not constantly delivering 
image data to an electronic viewfinder. That is just a fact and that is just because of the construction. I really want to drive that point home because people are usually very defensive about that because they don't want their mirrorless cameras to have any defects and to have any disadvantages over a DSLR. But it is just a matter of fact that there is more heat with a mirrorless camera. And usually that's perfectly fine as the cameras have heat sinks and so on that should get you through most shooting scenarios. But as I said, there can be situations where having a DSLR is actually better because of this special trait of mirrorless cameras. Value for money when shooting DSLRs is just incredible. The whole system price you actually have to pay is incredibly low. For example, my favorite combination, which I use for all my fashion editorial work, which I even use for runway shows, is the Nikon D800 and some AFD prime lenses. If you want lens recommendations regarding AFD prime lenses for the Nikon D800, take a look at my previous video. In any case, this combination is incredibly cheap and it delivers outstanding 36 megapixel high resolution, low noise images. Actually everything a still photographer could ever ask for. And besides that, you can even shoot full HD video with respectable quality. Of course, you don't have fancy autofocus follow during video. And if you need that, you have to look in the mirrorless department. But if you are shooting manual focus anyways, then the Nikon D800 is a perfectly capable video camera. And so are many other DSLRs. And why is that? Why are DSLRs so inexpensive? Well, that's thanks to many amateur photographers selling off the almost unused DSLR gear because they are making the switch to mirrorless. And you can take a look at the second hand market. You can get almost new lenses and camera bodies with below 20,000 shutter actuations for next to nothing. And such a professional kit will get you through the next five years at least. So really value for money. You have to pick a DSLR if you're looking for that. Now that I've talked so much about the incredible value for money that DSLRs offer, I won't let the opportunity slip and not give you recommendations. Of course, there are other great cameras besides those I'm going to mention right now, but those are the ones that I have tried and used extensively, so I can really attest to the quality and value for money. The first camera I'd like to recommend is this one right here. Wait, sorry. It is this one actually. This is the Nikon D7000 APS-C camera, 24 megapixel sensor, very capable autofocus system, two SD card slots. It is often considered an amateur's camera and it can be had for next to nothing. I bought mine with this lens, almost new in box, for 150 euros only. But while it is considered an amateur's camera, it is actually capable of delivering professional results. The 24 megapixel sensor is outstanding even today and it beats everything that comes out of a smartphone hands down. Also, the autofocus system is super fast and reliable. I've never had an issue at all. Compared to full frame cameras, it is slightly smaller. So, if you are looking for a travel camera or a camera for family occasions, the Nikon D7000 
is a great camera to choose. Also, if you are traveling to areas where the camera might get stolen or damaged, consider getting an Nikon D7000. You don't lose that much money if something happens to this camera, but you're also not compromising in terms of image quality and performance. If you are looking for even better image quality, for even better performance, then of course get a Nikon D800 or a Nikon D800e. I've already mentioned many of the outstanding features of the Nikon D800, 36 megapixel sensor, awesome autofocus system, dual card slot, full HD video, everything you could ever want in a camera, to be honest. Strangely enough, these cameras are sold around 600 euros at the moment, in almost mint condition, usually used and pre-owned by amateur photographers. Comparing this with the Nikon D700, which is also a great camera, with 12 megapixel and so on, but which is considerably older and doesn't deliver as good of an image quality as the D800 does, the D800 is really cheap because Nikon D700s sell for around 400 euros today. So you can get a considerable upgrade compared to the Nikon D700 for just a little bit more. So looking for a full frame beast for your landscape photography, for your portrait photography, get a Nikon D800. You won't be disappointed. The last camera recommendation is unfortunately not on my table. It is directed towards photographers looking for a medium format digital camera. You can already guess that I'm not recommending, of course, a mirrorless camera, but a digital single lens reflex camera, the Pentax 645C. You can also get a Pentax 645D, which is the older model, but I wouldn't really recommend it as the shutter unit is not as good and as reliable as the one in the 645C. But in any case, both cameras are really good. The 645C delivers outstanding image quality. Again, if you consider system price, the Pentax 645C comes in at considerably less money because you can get old 645 lenses and use them on the Pentax 645C even with autofocus. So Pentax 645 for if you want to shoot digital medium format cameras. I've tried it, I've used it, I don't have one right now, but I can really recommend it. It gets the job done for very little money actually. One often cited downside of DSLRs is that they are bigger and heavier than mirrorless cameras. But I'd even go as far as to say that this is a moot point. As camera size and camera weight system weight is mostly dependent on sensor size rather than camera type. Of course, if you take a mirrorless full-frame camera body and compare it to a full-frame DSLR, you will see that the mirrorless camera body is smaller. It has no mirror box, so it's a little bit thinner actually. It is also usually lighter as the DSLR. But if you attach a lens, you will find out that the mirrorless camera often catches up or even overtakes the DSLR, especially if you use something like a Nikon full-frame DSLR with AFD lenses. The AFD lenses are very small, half the size of mirrorless lenses mostly. So this is the one thing. DSLRs are of course a little bit heavier, but again with lenses things can get almost equal. Also consider the overall system weight. A DSLR usually needs only one spare battery to get you through the day. With a mirrorless camera, you have to bring more batteries, especially if you're shooting as a professional photographer and you have the camera on all the time and you're always scanning 
for images like on a wedding and so the preview of the viewfinder is always on then you're gonna drain batteries you need more batteries with mirrorless cameras and you have to bring them and they are quite heavy actually so it is important to state that mirrorless cameras are usually smaller and lighter as DSLRs but they are not as much lighter as manufacturers want you to believe. There is one professional camera system that is super light and super portable. And it's a mirrorless system, it's the Micro Four Thirds system. Just take a look at this. So if you really want to have the most compact system, get Micro Four Thirds mirrorless. You sacrifice image quality without a doubt, but you gain real portability. But don't be tricked into believing that switching from full frame DSLR to full frame mirrorless magically makes your full frame kit so light that it practically floats inside your camera bag, this is actually not true. And people who have switched probably can attest to this observation if they are completely honest with themselves. This video is not meant to be an anti-mirrorless rant. Not at all. I myself love mirrorless cameras as much as I love DSLRs. I actually started my professional career with mirrorless cameras. I shot mirrorless cameras professionally for about three to four years before switching to Nikon DSLRs. So why did I make the switch from superior mirrorless to inferior DSLRs? Well, actually, because DSLRs aren't inferior, they are just different. And this difference really mattered to me because I like analog things. I like an analog viewfinder. I also value that you get incredibly good equipment without spending too much money. You have the great used market where you can get vintage glass that offers unique character. And to be frankly honest, this sound is also a reason why I got a DSLR. This is just how photography sounds to many people, including myself. And I love that. My mirrorless cameras, they sounded a little bit different. So, Thank you very much for watching. Please share your thoughts and comments below this video. I also encourage you to consider subscribing to my YouTube channel and following me on Instagram. See you next time.